Hey everyone, Alex here from Kotaku. As you might have noticed from the start of the last couple of days, we've been posting about how the Overwatch beta will be opened up. First wave is just largely going to Blizzard's friends and family or close sort of members, people who are attached to the devs, that sort of stuff. But we have got a beta invite here, so I thought I would just take the chance to quickly show you all of the things that you will be able to do in the closed beta phase, because after the first week or two, this will start to be opened up to more people. So this will give you an idea of what you can go through. So I'll take you through the options first. This is a PC game, obviously, and people have been waiting and interested to see what Blizzard, how they would do FPS, what sort of options they would give you. So let's have a look. When you hit escape, this is what you, you're offered with. You have mouse, gamepad, key bindings, video and sound. I've got a gamepad plugged in at the moment, although I don't know if that's why that's showing. Uh, in the mouse sense, you do have a scaler, unfortunately. It's not going to let me actually manually change the number, but I remember from when I spoke to the Blizzard devs earlier this year, they, that is a thing that you will be able to change on release. Maybe it's something that will actually change out later in the closed beta as well. Invert mouse if you're insane. Never mind me, that's just always... In case you're interested, here are the gamepad settings. You know, again, it's not particularly a great deal there. Just your horizontal and vertical sense. Same again with invert. For your key bindings, you can unbind and you can have multiple binds for everything that you really want. So your basic movement, crouch jump, WASD, your main abilities. These again are largely set to E, Q, left shift, R if you need to reload, V is a standard. Thanks to Call of Duty, it's a standard melee button now. And one and two if you want to change anything, your secondary fires if you've got the mouse wheel for changing weapons, you know, all standard. Interesting here is the first one that we're seeing for a while is the set of emotes that you can use to communicate in game. So essentially a series of, you know, quick chat options. I'm thinking of Rocket League first comes to mind where it has everything that's bound on the D-pad, but also of course Heroes of the Storm does a similar thing. Interestingly, Overwatch does have a spray. Which is nice. CSGO doesn't have it, but Blizzard have put it in Overwatch, which is pretty cool. And, also importantly, spectate options. Which will be really good. Although, there is a slight, a little, little way to go before the spectator client is fully complete. Let's get into the crux of it. Here is the video settings. Now, this is the display settings that were set up. Uh, when I automatically started the game. I've got SLI disabled at the moment largely because I'm doing recordings and Windows, even though Windows 10 is nice, SLI and programs like dx 2 XSplit, OBS is what, you're, what I'm using. They don't... SLI can often cause problems. So I'm just running on one card at the moment and these are the settings that it went to. Ultra for graphics quality. Oh, we'll start from the top and go down. So, just like most of Blizzard games, you've got windowed full screen and borderless windowed. Uh, interestingly, it only opened up at full screen first up. I, I think Legacy of the Void, when I first loaded it up, opened up in borderless windowed, but you can change it to whatever you need to. Uh, multiple refresh rates, if you have the option that can do that. I'm on an ISO monitor at the moment that can do uh, up to 120 so I can, you know, change up or down. If you only monitor, can only do 60 or 75, then that's what you'll see there. And all your custom resolutions there. Haven't actually gone through and seen, and I might do that at a later stage to see whether you can run it Overwatch, if you can force it to run at custom resolutions. But for now, this is what you've got in there. Uh, 30 FPS cap, if you badly want it. Stats, uh, stat seems nice, I'll turn that on. Uh, triple buffering, V-Sync. Uh, full screen display so you can either automatically pick it or if you want to force Overwatch to run on a certain monitor, that's that option there. Gamma corrections. Uh, graphics settings, the graphics quality, this is a preset. Uh, 
it will just automatically change everything underneath here and have a look at your render scale which is you can set it automatically or just go from anywhere from low to epic and there are that are those five settings i should say is more or less where the main options will go down so low fog detail low medium high ultra shadow detail you can turn it off if you really want although these days in first person shooters you know it's kind of actually essential to have sh shadows on because that's often the first thing you'll see before someone comes around a corner is a shadow peeking out so you don't really want to be turning that off model detail four options there refraction quality three uh, single tick boxes for simple ambient lights, dynamics, ambient occlusion, local reflections. Anti-alias quality, interestingly, it's not you're not given an option that you would normally have in first-person shooters of, say, if I just want, like, 4 times AA, or if I want MSAA, or if I want, like, a NVIDIA-specific technology like FXAA. It's just low, medium, high, or ultra. I would presume that these settings are probably in the case of something like 2468. Possibly maybe ultra as high as 16. Who knows? Uh, Blizzard will have to confirm that at some later stage. Effects detail, again, four options here. Uh, three options for translucent tra shadows, unless you want to turn them off. Or translucent, translucent shadow detail, I should say. Uh, dynamic reflections same deal there filtering quality and texture quality all there so we'll go i'll go apply because i don't want the stats there for the sound options there's a little bit more you can have push to talk enabled uh team and party voice chat which i find interesting that blizzard went down this route they didn't want to do it for Heroes of the Storm. And you would have to venture that Overwatch would also suffer some of the same problems in terms of people just being generally unpleasant. We'll put that as, the, I think, the politest way of putting that. But voice chat is in there. And you can... They just say voice chat volume. I think most people would identify this as say and as i just turn the game volume up I like a microphone volume uh profanity filter enabled uh, it says audio settings now i don't know why this is in audio settings so normally i would presume that this would be a a chat filter i haven't had the chance to test it because this beta has only just gone up at the time of recording only in the last sort of hour or so by the time you see this it'll it'll be further on in the day but i i am guessing my Inclination is that that would be a chat filter, not an actual audio filter that beeps people out as you go through. So while we're here, we'll also just take you through the tutorial. I will put some footage at the end of this video without any commentary, just running through the tutorial. So you can see what that's like and you get a basic idea and it, it's fairly rudimentary. You know, it takes you through all the controls. You play through a soldier, 76 and you switch to Tracer at the end after, you, you know, here's an objective, here's how you shoot your gun, that sort of thing. You can create opponents versus AI, and you can pick easy, medium, or hard, which is nice. And there are six maps that you can play on, so that's worth noting. As for a private game, you can also add spectators in directly, and you can have, it is... Overwatch being Overwatch, it's a 6 on 6 game. I'm uh, sorry, 2. There's 4 slots for spectators there. Interestingly, there's 7. Is it? 1, one 2, 3, 4, 5. So, okay, that's intriguing. I'll just go back and check that. Practice versus AI. If I, did I miscount that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. So there's only 6 maps that you can practice versus bots. But you can make a private game on 7. Hmm. Interestingly. So, you can, you know, add a player here and then you can invite them off your your social list or whatever you want to do there. Which is nice. So, there'll be a, the ability to have private games already in the beta. Uh, clo and this is the first closed beta that they have, uh, Blizzard have opened it up to. So, that's a, a heartwarming sign, I think. It shows us a fair way away. So, anyway... 
that's the options that you'll have in the Overwatch beta. We're going to have, I'll go through and record some more gameplay footage and talk over it so you can see, for those who don't have access to it, you can see everything of what we're dealing with and what you'll be able to have access to within the not too distant future. If not, you know, sort of in the next week or so, then there will be multiple beta waves that go out after that. But that's all for now. Uh, enjoy the rest of the footage and I'll see you next time. Hello, Soldier 76. This is Athena. I will be guiding you through the combat training program. Let's begin. First, look up at the dropship above you. Thank you. We'll need some assistance for the next part of the program. Tracer, if you would. Now, use your controls to follow her. Over here! Excellent. Now find Tracer again. Here I am! Let's try that one more time. Then we can move on. Up here! Now, let's go over movement in Overwatch. You can move forwards and backwards in the direction you are looking. You can also move left and right. Excellent. Let's continue. Please follow Tracer as she moves around the hangar. Continue following Tracer. Tracer is moving again. Excellent. You seem to have the hang of it. Enter the target range and move to the highlighted area. Let's begin weapon training. First, let me put some things on your screen. You can see your portrait in the bottom left, Soldier 76. Your health is displayed to the right of your portrait. If your health reaches zero, you die. Try to keep that from happening. Your primary weapon is your heavy pulse rifle. I've set up a target for you in the range. Aim the crosshairs in the middle of the screen over the target. Ready. Nicely done. You can also hit the target up close with the bottom. Not all targets will be as easy to hit as this one. I am deploying some mobile training bots for you to destroy. Note the red outline around the robots. This means they are enemies. Damaging an enemy will slay the enemy. <laughs> Most weapons fire a limited amount of ammo before they need to be reloaded. Just great work. That covers the basics of your weapon. The next phase of the training program will focus on your abilities. Your first ability is Sprint. Good. Your next ability is Biotic Field. To properly demonstrate it, I need to damage you slightly. This might sting. <coughs> now deploy a Biotic Field at your feet. Stand inside the circular field to heal. Note that you will have to wait a short time before using that ability again. This cooldown time is displayed over the ability icon. I see that you are ready to continue. Very well. Your next ability is Helix Rockets. Using it launches a volley of rockets in the direction you are aiming. The rockets explode on contact. I have prepared a set of targets for you. Damage the targets with your Helix Rockets and we will move on. Note how the Helix rockets damage targets near the point of impact. Now, let's discuss your ultimate ability. That is called Visor. Ultimate abilities can change the course of a game. You must fully charge an ultimate ability before you can use it. The current charge level is displayed at the bottom of the screen. You charge your ultimate by dealing or taking damage. I'll summon some targets for you. Engage the training box. Your 
visor is charged. When it's active, aim in the direction of an enemy and open fire. I've now, got you in my sights. tactical visor and open fire. <laughs> I'll recharge tactical visor so you can try again. I've got you in my sights. All targets destroyed. Nice work, Soldier 76. For the final phase of the training program, you'll capture an objective. Your current objective is indicated with a directional marker on your screen. Head control point objectives are clearly marked by a bright outline on the ground. Security While you are within objective. the area, you make progress towards capturing the objective. Current capture progress is displayed on your screen. If there are enemies in the area with you, Capture progress is paused. Capture progress pauses if you move. You've captured the objective. Well done. There are times when you might want to switch heroes due to current combat conditions. Bring up the hero select screen to view all available characters. Let's try switching to Tracer. When you have a hero selected, you can view details about them. Now confirm your selection. Well done. You have completed your basic combat training. Please! 